So um, welcome, Edgar. Uh, that was an awesome clip you put together riding the new e Evo SLS. Tell us a little bit about the filming of that clip and uh, the locations that you went to. Hi, Toby. Well, thank you. And um, yeah, I really, uh, really liked this uh, edit as well. Uh, we've been riding to, to Grisson, a French spot in south of France. Uh, it's next to Lecat. And uh, we had pretty good conditions. We shot this uh, edit on two days different. And uh, yeah, I think we had great condition for, for two days of filming. Um, so how long have you had the Evo SLS kites and uh, what spots around the world have you had the chance to ride with them? Uh, well, I'm uh, having my eight Evo SLS since uh, half September. And uh, I've been riding as well the nine and the 12 Evo with, uh, with Renault in Brazil. Uh, we had the chance to to try it and, uh, and maybe uh, getting used to it little by little. And uh, I think you can do way more with the SLS kite than with a normal kite. Um, so do you have a favorite feature about the Evo SLS? Yeah, I love this kite because in strong wind, you can still have some, some power and the kite is not deforming. And, um, and on light wind, uh, if you want to go freestyle, even in 10 knots is possible. Uh, it creates so much wind and the kite is going way more in the edge of the window. So that is a, a, a real uh, step up for this year. Speaking to Renault Romeo and Aaron Hadlow, they mentioned also that the kite flies further forward in the window, um, which gives you upwind performance, um, but also changes the jumping characteristics. How have you found this um, and how have you had to adapt to riding the new Evo SLS? Yeah, well, I had to adapt as well, um, but I think it's a big key for for performing more on a on a on a new kite. Uh, you can use more your window for going higher on some loops, or um, or even when riding just upwind when you're a free rider or something like this. And this is a big bonus. So it's almost like you have a extended wind range, right? So it's like when you're jumping, do you, do you get more vertical lift? Is that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just while doing loops, you just have more vertical going up and after just sending your loop and your kite just stays above your head and everything is perfectly controlled. Um, what sizes of Evo SLS do you currently ride and um, what do you do on each size? Well, I currently ride the uh, eight for some bigger loops and uh, on strong winds, and um, I also ride a ten uh, for just some some fun big air and maybe some loops when the conditions are good, and uh, and a twelve meter uh, when the, when conditions are light and you can just have some good freestyle session as well, uh, freestyle uh, hooked or unhooked, and just riding when everyone is just watching at the beach. So we need to talk a little bit about that snow kite uh, session that was featured on the Do A Tone Instagram account. That S loop was pretty amazing. Um, tell us a little bit about that session. Yeah, well, it was my first time trying uh, snow kiting. Uh, I loved it. And uh, I think you can get pretty confident with the, with the new materials and the new kites, uh, even the new lines as well. Um, once you really get used to it, uh, you can trust 100% your gear and I think that that makes difference uh, on on your riding sessions. So, do you feel the the stiffness and structure of the Penta TX really gave you additional confidence then with that move? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, the new materials are 100% sure. Uh, they're stronger. They're rigid. Uh, everything you need just to 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 control your kite 100%. And um, that's all what I've need for for improving more and more on each sessions. Well, cool. and how, how nervous though were you going into that? I mean, it's obviously a, a big move. It's not one you want to mess up. Yeah, well, I was completely under adrenaline. Um, I was just pulling some some bigger jumps uh, before, um, doing some loops bigger, 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 higher, and uh, I just went for for that S loop, just thinking about Ruben's video. Uh, Ten years ago, just seen doing a, a S loop, and I just wanted to do it one day. So it just felt easier on the snow with the height, and uh, just went for it under adrenaline, and yeah, it went pretty good. <laughs> awesome. So, um, what's next for you? 
Yeah, well, um, next year is going to be a complicated year with the with the COVID uh, situation. Um, I'm not going to follow the the GK tour anymore. Uh, I'm going to do more uh, into videos and uh, and uh, fun riding. And uh, yeah, so maybe I'm just going to travel around the world and uh, doing some content and uh, and riding for for myself. Great. Um, you also got accepted, though, for the King of the Air, even though it's been postponed. Um, how is that to be accepted for that? It's probably a dream for a big air rider to be in that, no? Yeah, I'm super stoked on competing on the King of the Air. Uh, it was a dream since I was a kid. Um, it's, uh, it's the only real competition you want when you're riding big air. It's the big thing, the Red Bull, uh, the Red Bull event, uh, something that means a lot when you're a kid. And um, just achieved my goal is to is to to be qualified, and uh, now it's time to to show a bit uh, what what can I do uh, on on a, on a real competition. So, can you tell us what you've been training um, for the King of the Air? Yeah, well, I've been riding a lot on the um, on the right side uh, lately, uh, and Cape Town is a spot where you have to to know how to to ride on the on the left side. So I've, now I'm trying to to improve more my left side tricks uh, and do some boogie board off and things like this and uh, and yeah do all the tricks that I can do to the right now I have to do it to the left. Awesome. Well, we're super excited to see you in the King of the Air and looking forward to the content you're going to produce uh, in the coming months. Thanks for your time, uh, Edgar. Thank you. See you, Tubby.